Yagumi are trying to get on top of the bailings. There are no bailings on the map right now. Ultras are going to get made, and we talked about how good of a position this is for Dark. You need some level of bailings at all times, and Dark does not have them. He loses the base. He's going to lose his tech just a little bit. The Queens are going to go down, and Gumiho stims right through, loses his plus two melee, loses his plus two attack. The upper right in the red. He's for Cloud9. It's Gumiho. Bottom right, bottom left in the blue for Talon, taking a 2 1 over stats to get here. It's dark. Fifteen pool, or sixteen pool, I guess. Coming out of dark in this game number one. Does he think that this is a proxy Rax play out of Gumiho? Is this just a properly de just deal with some sort of two racks in the wall Reaper sh scenario? What you got up your sleeve here, Dark? What you going for? I think this is probably just because 15 or 16 pools 16 hatches is a pretty solid option against these kind of reaper uh, racks in the wall or reaper shenanigans that terran players have really been enjoying for the most part but this is only single racks we're not seeing a second barracks go down and yeah generally they are offset a little bit but yeah this is a one 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 so barracks in the wall factory then a start then a command center coming down behind this is what we're gonna see so Gumio's trying to tell a story that is a little bit oh well never mind I was going to talk about how this is uh maybe a react or just a kind of a counterplay Gumio or Dark doesn't want Gumio to do whatever it is that Gumio wants to do but instead no this is a this is a roach timing this is a 19 drone going down of course you you drone down you drone down off of that buying buying structures but this is a 19 drone roach timing you're going to move across the map with about five roaches and this is a marine first so this is not even reapers huh you don't really see these builds match up all that often now for now the overlord will go down which is very unfortunate but lings are going to be able to punish these marines there's nowhere for them to go they're going to put themselves into a corner lings are going to get right on top of them like one ling goes down but that's actually a pretty big deal these any any sort of early game defensive unit that you can find against this roach setup is a pretty big deal so for now we're going to see the command center go down ling checks the high ground says oh what am i going to find really nothing but the command center is going to be delayed the marines continue to take damage here and notice what dark's doing he's like i just i want to get damage done to these marines that's what's important i want to knock these down i want to kill as many of them as possible and now the roaches run across which means they should get over uh, they should get over to the natural before the natural is done now this is a big scout from gumiho he knows what's happening he sees what's up he says okay look i saw this great i know that there are roaches on the way uh this should be a bunker on the low ground command center. this is building cyclones absolutely but okay so i said the road i thought the roaches were gonna get on the other side of the map before the command center was done because of the delay and like technically they will but it's only a single roach and I, uh, he's gonna beeline he's gonna try to get the, the delay on this if he if, he's gotta get the scv right now one more shot two there we go Okay, command center is delayed. And now, well, that command center is not going to be done for quite a while. Gets on top of the cyclone, but the lock on is going to be good. Certainly, the wall is open, though. And there are ravagers here. Ro or not ravagers. Uh, or roaches. We can talk about that. Sure, fine. Hellions are dying. Ravagers are here. A second Hellion's dead. Gumiho is in a bit of a pickle. And it's a nice organic pickle, too. Not your kind of run of the mill modern pickle. It's. Who knows what's in it now this is a nice organic pickle the dark has built for himself a nice biological pickle Ooh, i don't know about that uh but dark for now he's gonna knock down a cyclone loses a ravager for it so the timing on this is is limited <laughs> in the extreme banshee out as well so dark he delays the natural for until about four minutes he gets five drones gets a cyclone gets two hellions was that enough i would have i would say yes probably so long mm, caveat I'd say that's enough so long as he goes and he can defend the, the, the next punch, the counter punch from Gumio. Because remember, his, his lair is going to be delayed. His queen count is, is only at two right now. It's not incredible. Lightning speed, of course, is a... That's a long ways off. I'm actually surprised he's still mining gas here. I, 
I would have expected him to just pull everything into minerals just to, to optimize your mineral economy after you have gone and made it so hard to this early game, but I guess not. You still want to layer decently timed and go for everything else. But what's our follow-up here, Dark? Is this is this Nidus? It's gonna be three gas. This is feeling like a Nidus follow-up, to be totally to be frank. I uh, I think in part because you're 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 on this idea that Gumeo is probably gonna be pretty greedy off of this. That makes a lot of sense. You know, you go and your opponent was aggressive. They got damage done, but not the end of the world. Not like game ending damage. And you got Banshee. So you're not really worried about too much of anything. So you go and you, you drop your third base on location. You you really try to greet out on top. This is the Raven as well as a pretty cool is a pretty cool addition. Of course, auto turrets are a way to commit to get damage on without really committing too much. You can go and knock down a ton of creep spread with this double Banshee Raven idea. Uh, hmm. The Roach Speed on the way, Double Evo on the way, and I guess it won't be a Nidus after all. Just Roach into like, uh, like Roach Ravager type of idea, Roach Max, I guess. But I man, into two Banshees, I don't really like that. So anyway, we're gonna have to see exactly where uh, where Dark decides to take this game. But for now, Gumiho, he's got map control. His third base is up decently timed, and yeah, you know, his economy is not quite as good as Dark's is. Uh, fine, uh, it's not quite as good as Dark's is. But he's gonna have mules. He's got triple mules. That that is totally okay. He's also gonna have his one one faster than than the Zerg player will. So he's gonna have this nice timing where if he can go and he can build a couple tanks maybe and just get himself all set up, he's gonna have one one before the before the, the Zerg player has one one roaches. That's always a really nice position to find yourself in. Certainly as this fourth base gets canceled as well. No saving that one whatsoever. Uh, yes, uh, Dark had a nice biological pickle. We're going to not do for We're not doing phrasing on this. I'm not pig. But if you wish. Thing about biological pickles. Um, I, I guess we can do that. <laughs> I saw. I, I don't know. I guess pickles are in my head. I saw the um, what was it? The. The Seth Rogen movie. I actually haven't seen the movie, but I saw it like a clip from it the other day. Someone had forget the context, but anyway um of the seth rogan movie where there's there's a guy that like he's a early 1900s um eastern european immigrant who a pickle vendor who somehow like pickle like drops into his own pickle jar or something and wakes up in 2024 or 2022 as this fourth base is gonna get canceled once again and she dps is nothing to shake a stick at certainly when you add in the auto turrets as well and by the way this fourth base canceled as well darks in a horrible spot this game yeah, they're, he, he's really liking this Roach Hydra idea. Certainly, 1-1 one, one is going to be done. But man, this is the third canceled fourth. But yeah, whatever it is, whatever the... Um, whatever that movie is, I forget. Yeah, I, I saw some clip of it with him. Uh, whatever the clip uh, Seth, Ro Seth Rogen's character is going and... Like, putting... Uh, is this going to be another kid? These Banshees have found so much value. The Raven has found so much value in canceling these bases. I mean, Dark's economy is not good. It's at 74 drones, but we're looking at Roach Hydra and the Terran players up in supply. Yes, this is not a massive 1-1 one, one Roach Max. Sure, absolutely. The Terran player is still up in supply against a bunch of Roaches. I mean, it's just not good. This is a real rough game the Dark is trying to play. Now, infestors, they can make a big difference. Lurkers can make a big difference. If Dark, if, if Gumiho tries to attack into a bunch of lurkers and infestors, it's not going to work out all that well for you. But for now, pressure on the fifth base once again. These roaches are just in a horrible spot now. Dar Kumio just pulls the trigger. Now the fungals are really solid, actually. And all it takes are a couple good fungals for you to come back into the game. Unfortunately, Dark is, I think, way too far back in this game. That even as he hits some really good fungals, he denies the fifth base once again. He kills off, I want to say, some of the... Uh, kills off a couple of the infestors. What did he, did he get an infestor? Kills off the Infestor, gets a Hydra, gets a couple of Ravagers. I mean, it is just not the type of game that you want to play. But 
now this pressure out of Gumio feels I'm not gonna say insurmountable but it feels pretty rough feels pretty hard to deal with uh plus two armor on the way but no plus one at uh, oh, no, sorry it was two two on the way for dark I'm apparently very very blind but okay so lurker range about halfway done uh hydra speed muscular augments done Dark is, is roughly maxed out. If he, again, if he can hit a good fungal, it's going to be worth doing. <laughs> There's no one faster in this army right now. It's a good surround, actually. Dark, he's maybe making a pretty good fight out of this, but the Hydras are slow. They're behind. The pair of the blinding cloud is just not there. Abduct on the tank, but I know <laughs> this is a trade that is good enough for Gumio right now to allow him to continue to snowball on forward. The Hydras, they don't have 2-2 two -two just yet. Gumio does. The flank was solid. It worked out a little bit better than we would have expected, but uh, not not great. So again, Dark's on four bases. He's trying to take this fifth. He's not allowed to take this fifth. Lurkers are not even on the map. Dark, despite committing to all these upgrades, do it can't afford it. And this pressure from Gumiho is relentless. Yeah, the tank count is not insane. Uh, it's not an incredible, not an incredible number, but you know it's there. And Gumio is equal on army supply against this Roach Ravager player. Now, uh, we do have to worry. Of course, Lurkers are done on the map now. There is that. It's going to be a little bit harder for Gumio to, to commit a little bit further. Uh, but okay. Apparently, the the movie that has pickles in my brain is uh, called American Pickle. It's a, a Max original. I've never seen it. I've just seen the one clip of this uh, Eastern European you know, immigrant going and like getting a bunch of NBA <laughs> NBA students to try out in a very awkward way because hey you know whatever it is uh, anyways we're gonna see Gumio move forward once again this time there are lurkers on the field the fungal is actually gonna be really nice north side as well Gumio just lost a lot he is losing so much <laughs> he was he, Gumio in a pretty good solid position this game as he tries to boost forward save the tank he will not save the tank in fact the medevac goes down as well all of a sudden dark just had an incredible 30 seconds look at this one tank, four Marauders, 19 Marines, three Medivacs. For two drones, 20 Lings. Ah, oh, man. That is what we call some cost effectiveness. And despite Dark's economy being not good, I think that's a bit of an understatement. But despite Dark's economy being pretty dang horrible here, he just took a fantastic fight. And this opens up so much for him. He's got plus three attack on the way. He's taking his fifth into sixth base. Gumio does not have nearly the level of pressure that he would like. His fifth base is much, much slower. So this lurker is going to get stimmed upon. We'll, we'll go down. This gold base, Dark's not in position to defend. So that gold base will... Uh, actually, was that a kill? Okay, we'll, we'll get killed. But now Dark's trying to attack into this, actually. He's trying to take advantage of the fact that he just had this incredible moment. He's got an army on the right side. No tank here, I don't think. He's got an army on the left side that's going to struggle to move forward a little bit forward. And now while Snipe goes down on the Vipers, it's not... Uh, is this good for Dark? I think it is, actually. He does bust through on the on the north side. He kills a lot of Gumiho's stuff. He's going to try to get on top of this uh, on top of this fourth orbital because Gumiho has been relying on the aggression to keep him alive, which means he's been very greedy on the orbital play. A ghost will go down, and eventually... I Gumiho just dead? I don't know that he is what it takes to deal with these lurkers. I mean, he's trying to dodge the lurker spines, but there are so many of them there. And Dark's got the comeback. It's just the most dark game ever. He takes game one. We saw the Roach build. It worked out. Yeah, I kind of did. And then Dark just was pinned back and able to... He has fourth base canceled four times. And like that should be a Terran victory. That should absolutely be a Terran victory. I mean, Zerg needs money. <laughs> Zerg needs economy. Zerg needs many, many things. And if you don't have that, like it just, yes, technically going Roach Hydra frees you from the fourth base requirement. He's doing it again. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't look at the production tab. Like I just assumed he wasn't going to go for a second, a second spawning pool twice in a row. But, uh, yeah, he's going for the Roach build once again.
Going for the Roach build again. And is Gumiho prepared for this? I have no idea. He's got a much more standard opener this time. It's a Reaper Expand, which is uh, ironically a little bit worse against what Dark is doing. So Lings are going to show up and they're going to delay the Command Center as much as they can, which is the entire goal of this. It's only two Lings, right? You don't commit a ton of a ton of this as Queen in the main base. Now, Reaper's going to see a Roach Warren. I, I just got to see the Roaches. <laughs> there we go. There's your scout. Uh, but for now, Command Center will be delayed. Marine is out. That's going to be annoying. So we're not going to see... Oh, STV goes down. Okay. I didn't think it was going to die. The Roach is now rallying across. This time, it's funny. I, I say the Reaper Expand is arguably worse, and it is, assuming you don't get the Scout. Uh, but assuming you do get the Scout, which Gumiho does, and the Reaper does provide that to you, it, you do have the Scouting option. You do have this opportunity to go and, and see what you can find. So for now, the Bunker is going to be done. Roaches are on the way. They're not going to get nearly as much done. I think we're just still going to see them dive the SCV for the Orbital. Or for the command center so delay that thing as long as possible yeah that that much is true and this forces the marines out of the bunker that that is important to point out but i we're not going to see a dive into the main base i don't think you need seven ravagers to bust a bunker down from 100 to zero uh certainly there's a cyclone out right now and th there is that god i i cannot wait for them to make it so cyclones have cooldown again on their lock on but for now, I mean, Dark is doing a really nice job of delaying this command center. SCVs are showing up and they're dying, which is not really what you want. Is Dark also is doing a really nice job of cycling the HP on, on the roaches, but even still, they will eventually run out of they will eventually run out of HP. Marines are gonna dive on top of this as well. Bile is not really gonna hit, and Dark has not gotten enough out of this whatsoever. Uh we said that like last game he at least got a couple SCVs, he delayed the command center. A lot longer. He got a cyclone. Fool me once, says Gumiho. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame on you. And Dark, well, is is shamed. Dark is very much shamed. So third base on the way. Eventually, He's gonna try to get that happen. He's gonna try to get that thing started. But behind this, cyclone drops on the way, and the Reaper on the third base position. Good luck. <laughs> oh, this. I'm not saying we're going to take game three tied up one apiece, but uh, I'm not saying we're not either. So the drone will not go down. We'll get saved. But uh, my goodness. Dark is not a happy camper in this game. I mean... Yeah, uh, not a happy camper whatsoever. So we're going to see an Overlord go down. Dark, a little bit supply block right there. And this time he is doing something uh, a little bit different at this. He doesn't think he got enough damage to go for the Roach Hydra idea. There's just too oppressive. So there is that. We're going to see a fourth base on the way on the fourth base, <laughs> third base on the way here on this position. But with the Cyclones here and the Queens off creep, uh, maybe I put a queen. Oh, back on a creep. And I guess the cycle... Oh, he's going to snipe a queen in the main base. Don't mind if I do, says Gumio. Thank you very, very much. That's less injects, less production. We're going to see an overlord go down as well. I mean, this is just, just annoying right now. But hey, Link's in the main base. <laughs> oh, man. Never... Can't keep a good dark down, guys. He takes a ton of damage, puts himself... He loses queens, loses overlords, finds himself sniped to all hell. And he gets Link's in the main base, denies a ton of mining time, kills off some SCVs, gets a full scout of everything... Eh, maybe not much more than that. But he's got his third base up. He's got his fourth base on the way. He's got an economy that's not horrible. Certainly not considering that he's got a decent amount of, of SCVs. Dive on top. There are a couple lowest. Oh, he's going to get a couple. No, he's not. No, he is not. I was going to say he can dive on top of the mineral line and, and get a couple SCVs that were low, but he's not going to do that. Okay. All right, then. So dark is not the best spot, but not a horrible spot. It's probably the way we're going to talk about it. 1-1 one, one on the way for Gumiho. Only Carapace on the way for dark right now. No Baneling Nest. No Lair. Four, four Hatch. I, again, playing very greedy. Trying to optimize his economy to get back into this game. And Thorn, Thorn in Twitch chat is saying he doesn't know that the delay on the, on the natural was all that different and it wasn't it was about a 10 second difference i think is we're gonna see the lings try to dive in just dead hellions i i, I really do enjoy 
of the addition of Hellions from Gumio in this game. He knows that Dark is just playing this very Ling heavy style looking for counterattacks. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to add a couple Hellions. I'm going to make it really hard for you to do what you want to do to, to force me back home. But Ling's, oh, they're going to catch some of the reinforcements. Very nice there. Good job, Dark. They just dodge around the first bit of that. So that's a bunch of dead Marines. This Carapace time, he's actually working out for Dark very nicely. Doing a lot with, well, I'm not going to say he's doing a lot, but doing much more than he should with a very, very little amount of this army. Uh, but he's got more. <laughs> he's got his fifth base on the way. He's got his sixth base on the way. Getting on top of these Marines once again. And Dark is just showing us that while he may be number 11 on Mizenhauer's uh, top, uh, top 10 of all time, he is still a very scary player. And certainly he's playing Ring Around the Rosie with Gumiho right now. Two games in a row where he has had a pretty significant deficit. And two games in a row where he's making it damn hard for Gumiho to do anything about that. But yeah, anyways, talking about that. Yes, the command center was about, it was like 10 seconds less delayed. It was like 403, I think, done versus like 413, something like that. As the Ling run by once again, this time it's going to be a dead tank as well as these Marines. Uh, yes, Gumiho does have an upgrade lead right now. It's 1-1 it's one, one versus 0-1. One. The plus one attack is going to be done soon rather than later but it forces a scan because burrow's done and a couple more lings burrow up on the right side so another scan maybe i agumi was just forced to stay home he's taking god dark is just so active right now he's like yeah you know i can i win this fight can i win this game in a straight up fight no do i want to win this game in a straight up fight no i'm gonna keep you back at home i'm gonna keep lings all over the place i'm gonna burrow lings all over the place and I'm going to force you to spend scans. I'm going to force you to keep your army back home. And I'm just not going to give you this opportunity to do anything that you could possibly want to do. <laughs> so forcing missile turrets. Is bailing speed done? Bailings are... Okay, bailing speed is done. One one's done. Two two's on the way. Hive getting started here. Dark has the map. Creep sprint not incre incredible on the north side base. So this drop is not going to be early detected. And I think Dark may lose this. There's a queen here, but that's just a dead queen. <laughs> going to get gunned down. Uh, Lings are going to show up and Bane Lings are here. Nice target fire from Gumio, but not enough. And actually, yeah, the base stays alive. Very well done. So Dark keeps his north side base up. He's got his south side base up here. Sitting on six bases to the three of our Terran player. And, okay, the drive on top once again. There are too many. Too many Lings. That's not good. That that attack, this triple drop's not going to get a ton. Dark. Oh. Is he going to try to take the 12 o'clock base too? I think he might be trying to. Got a bing run by on the right side. Oh, man. <laughs> Spurrow, I, I don't know exactly if you meant to do that one, Dark, but we'll take it. Is this drop on the north side is, is somewhat managed. There is that, and... The boosted medevac for a scout. Okay, that's pretty fun. Uh, but for now, this drop is... I mean, he's trying to get some damage. It, it, the Marines have personal healers, so there is that. Not not a lot's going to really do much. Uh, but now this Bane Ling run by on the right side. Widow Mines actually seem like they got some really good trades. Where, where's my mouse? There we go. Uh, 11 kills. Zero kills on that one. So actually, oh, I guess only 11 kills. Dark doing a pretty nice job. All things considered, though, is he's able to continue to put this pressure on up. 20, uh, 20 total supply. Plus two attack on the way, adrenaline on the way, adding in ultras. Uh, I, and the thing is, so ultras are not very good. They're better than they used to be because it takes one extra snipe to kill them off. But if you're hitting, I'm not even going to say this early of an ultra timing because we're 11 minutes in, right? It's not, it's not insanely early, but what it is, is early in the context of the game because we don't have two, two ton for our Terran player right now. No ghost academy on the map. Fourth base is only just now getting taken. If you can do what Dark is doing, where you can keep your Terran... Oh, Widowmine drop on the bottom side. Three, seven, eight. Oh, there we go. Eight drones fall. But if you can keep the Terran player back this far, it kind of economically, tech-wise, and then get your Ultras out, despite this being technically behind and, and maybe not the best, uh, like Ultras are uh, technically slow, quote-unquote, and Ultras, again, not being the best late-game unit, you can get them into this position. Wait, Dark canceled Adrenal. He wants to hit this timing with the Ultras, I guess. I'm not really sure, but he canceled Adrenal. That's a great Bane connection, though. More are going to try to find their way forward. Gumio not paying attention here whatsoever. Ling's on top, and I mean, 18 SCVs go down. It's going to be even more than that. So yeah, Dark lost some economy. 
Gumio lost even more. But the lack of adrenaline, I mean, adrenaline is, oh man, eight more drones go down for this. What am I dropping? Adrenaline is probably the most important late game upgrade you can get as a Zerg player. It really is. Oh no, adrenaline, I'm dumb. I saw the adrenaline wink out and I thought it wasn't totally complete. Adrenaline's done. <laughs> We're okay. We're not going to belabor the point anymore, but now these are spicy lings. These are cracklings. They're going to run forward. Eat some juicy Widowmine shots, but now Dark on the right side. Kumio's entirely on the left side, and yeah, uh, Adrenal Cracklings with a couple Ultras. They're going to crack this fourth base planetary like paper. It's going to go down very quickly, and yeah, you know what? Dark may lose the north side base. He's mined a lot out of it already. He's got the bottom side. His economy is still on 84 work. He's got blinding clouds, parasitic bombs. The Vipers don't want to get targeted down here, and well, they're not going to, I guess, because, well, there, there is that. But this Ultra's got personal feelings. The Queen is here. Ultra's getting on top of everything. Ling's on the backside. Gumi was dead again. Um, yeah. Dark behind wins game number two as well. We move to game three. Dark's up too. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit surprised to see Gumi or to see Dark doing this again. Yes, technically it worked. No, it didn't work. Yes, he won the game. And uh, yes, technically he won the last two games opening up as he has, but the 16 pool roach timing has not really gotten a lot of damage done. And as Thorne said two minutes ago, or yeah, two minutes ago because of stream delay and everything else, uh, now it's time for another awful roach rush. <laughs> Uh, the answer is yes, apparently it is. Although I guess if this is this is a T-Rex Reaper on the wall, I kind of like this one a little bit more. Weird. Oh, hmm. So I guess not. I guess this is just defensively against the T-Rex Reaper potential opener. So we're going to see a pretty quick third base out of dark. 22 supply. No Roach Warren on the way. Huh. Seeing people say, well, apparently, I don't know. Um, for now, though, the lings are out early. And we're going to see the Reaper in the main base. Of course, so uh, the point of this in part is you go, you get a couple lings early that gives you defensive power, but your your speed is delayed. Your gas is very delayed. I mean, Dark is gasless here. So he's going to pull the drones looking for a citizen's arrest. He's not going to find it. That is a wiggly little Reaper. That is a very wiggly Reaper. Now there's a second one out and there's no speed. There's no timing as, oh, uh, Reaper. Reaper goes down. Drone falls for it. But any sort of damage you can get done on these Reapers is actually a really big deal. And remember as well that the third base is done. Reapers will not cancel this. It's only two Reapers out right now. A third one was made, but you know, again, it's pretty far, pretty far away. So this third base is going to get up. It's going to get fine. It's going to be totally fine. It's not going to get killed by this. And Dark is just slowly getting his queen count out just a little bit more, developing just a little bit more. So there's a third base on the way from Gumiho. So... This is the first time where Gumiho has been the one that eh, he really hasn't gotten a, a lot done. In fact, he had to build an extra Reaper to get that three Reaper magic number, that two shots lings, that two shots drones is a nice little bit of little nice positioning right there from Dark. Um, of course, that's what you want to do. You put lings and a queen on the high ground ramp and then the Reaper shows up. They take damage. Uh, they really can't get much done. They just they leap up into a surround. But opening up 16 hatch into double expand on 22 is actually a really nice i don't know if dark knew gumiho was going for this but it's a really nice build counter effectively yeah you know would you like speed sure speed's great i as a zerg player myself i do enjoy playing with speed I, i'm not a as much of a fan of playing gasless just because like lings are fast and they're fun to play with fast things but dark is very much a roach is very much a roach man he very much enjoys his roach play and again we are four minutes and 30 seconds into this game and Dark has not mined a single iota of gas. He's just defending with Queens. We're going to see Creep Tumor get dove. First one will fall. Second one is alive. So the Creep's still going to get spread out of that position. One Reaper goes... Second Reaper, excuse me, and this game goes down. I'm a little worried about the follow-up timing. 
Dark is relying on pure Queen to defend against this. We don't even have a Roach point. He's got his fourth base on the way. And this stim timing, this effectively 2 1 1. I, it's what it is. It's three, three racks, 2 1 1. It's kind of the TY build, just a little bit different. Uh, is not gonna is we're gonna rely totally on queens to defend literally nothing else no speedlings uh, uh layers on the way before any defensive structure now who am I? i'm far be it for me to go and, and criticize dark but he has literally no defense here he's got eight queens nine queens on the way like that is something sure eight queens are beefy units they can still get stim down this is still something that is problematic to say the least so the Overlord's going to scout in, see what's up. Hey, this is still a lot of Queens. So Gumio's going to try to target this down. I, I don't think he gets this, but he's going to boost in the main base. And here's the other problem. The Queens are not fast. So dropping into the main base, 14 Lings on the way. They don't have speed. So they're really going to struggle to get on top of things. It, kind of a sacrificial mass here more than anything else. Is Now they're going to get on top of the Marines. But again, they're not critical mass here. Not enough. And at the end of the day, it's only two drones that go down. So Dark is handling this far better than I would have expected this might have act take some damage as well the problem with taking this this position this fourth base position is that uh I mean we the Terran can do exactly what we're seeing right now just this obnoxious he stems on top of the Queens transfuses are good though transfuses are very good so dark gets away with the giga greed <laughs> the greatest thing that I've ever seen I mean I I not mining a single shred of gas until five minutes is just wild not what you expect <laughs> all right so Karen aggression moving in on the south side now speed is done and this army is far too small to deal with anything that dark has and now dark's greed is, is really paying off he's equal in army supply against the Terran player when he has not been building army for all that long he's got his bailing nest done bailing speed not even started you would like that bailing speed is a pretty important upgrade is now this attack this pressure commits a little bit more uh we have plenty of transfuses though so lings are not oh there they go there's the surround okay on top of this tank on top of these marines plus one's not done yet queens are gonna knock the tank down and yes the marines will fall transfuses should be fine and as long as the tanks go down that's really all that you care about so mainly speeds on the way and remember in the same uh the same patch that nerfed it's uh, the fact that you get plus five hp per bangling to make sure they live a little bit longer it also buffed the build time so it's not as bad three more barracks on the way as we look at what gumio is going so all roads lead to eight racks is what gumio says in this game and i mean this is five hatchling bane six hatch seven hatchling bane we got the macro hatch in the main we got five mining bases technically Although this base isn't really mining for the most part it's still a macro hatch and another base on the north side this going eight racks into this is like kind of the worst option as long as dark can keep his macro up and by the way he's not doing a, bad, a great job at 1500 minerals in the bank uh, in part because the queens have all been pulled forward defensively 1500 minerals in the bank is a pretty big deal and if he can get his money spent he should be totally fine but this is certainly a mechanics heavy type of composition that he's going for where you have to make sure that your larva count is very, very uh, looked after. Because otherwise, again, you're just not going to be able to do a ton. So uh, he's going to have Lings on the flank here coming behind. One queen will fall down, but Lings getting ready. Bailing speed is done. 1-1 one, one is done. This is a timing the Dark can really try to run into. Now, Tank's in a bit of an awkward position. You got to be careful about that one. But Dark says, oh, that's fine. Although he does have to be careful this drop in the main base. He's going to be okay there. Big Ling run by. Lings and Banes onto the minute or onto the ramp here. Now tank's gonna siege up. But it's not gonna get incredible damage, but a bailing into the mineral line. Maybe not. Nah, it's not gonna get much. Not even gonna get this tank, I don't think. But there's the burrow. And Gumiho forced right back home. Now Dark does lose the left side base. There is that. I think he could have taken this fight, honestly. He had a really nice surround setup. But uh even still, he's not going to. Dark still, he's on five bases to the three bases, six hatches five bases to the three bases of the Terran player so even if it's like well okay well, sure he's not upset about this he's got his hive done 2-2 two -two on the way he doesn't have 2-2 two -two just yet but he's got his 2-2 two -two just about done bailings will get targeted down by the tanks right there is dark a little bit of pathing not, not making him super happy but he's got his ultra cavern just about done and into an eight racks i mean ultras are just pain and misery so lings are going to get on top of this bio uh target fire actually on the banes is really really nice but the tanks will eventually go down the marines will eventually go down 
Dark is handling this decently, but the trick with an A-Rex is you got to make sure you have Banelings ready at all times. You got to make sure you're defensively positioned at all times because the, man, 12 Marines at a time means that you are often, you lose one fight, it's a bit of a pickle. This tank is still here. This tank is still here causing problems. Gumi are trying to get on top of the Banelings. There are no Banelings on the map right now. Ultras are going to get made, and we talked about how good of a position this is for Dark. You need some level of Banelings at all times, and Dark does not have them. He loses the base. He's going to lose his tech just a little bit. The Queens are going to go down, and Gumiho stems right through, loses his plus two melee, loses his plus two attack. This timing is incredible for Gumiho, and he has just killed Dark again. <laughs> you got to keep Banelings on the map at all times, and Gumiho punishes Dark for not doing just that. 1-1 one, one versus 2-2, two, two, plus three attack on the way. It's a three base Dark right now. Four hatch Dark. Sure, he's got Ultras done, but no Kiteness. These are plus one armor Ultras. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> Antrus, die. I guess the one saving grace for Dark here is he does have to go. Uh, we talked about three base Dark. Uh, not really. Yeah, he's dead. Gumiho takes a game. <laughs> Apparently, to win games in this series, you got, you got to go down early. Dark falls down. Gumiho takes a mat. So I, it's funny. Whoever's in the lead at like seven minutes is apparently just doomed to lose in this series. This is what we're finding out as Dark again going for this quick, this quick pool. Again, he's going for this quick pool, which is. Again, I, I, I got to say, I'm a little surprised. I this is not how a lot of this is not how Zerg players are playing for the most part. But Dark, I don't know if this is how Dark wants to play right now. I don't know if this is. Just how he wants to play against Gumiho. But uh, he's doing it again. And this time it's just going to be your standard Reaper expand, which is arguably better. But uh, I think I like this even less because Side Delta is a map where you have a ramp up the high ground. Side Delta is a map where the roaches, if he does go for roaches, and we don't know. Not guaranteed. He could go for a 22 third. Um, but he does continue to mine gas, and there's no third base on the way, and I don't see a drone deputized just yet. Uh, regardless, if this is roaches, going up the ramp does not feel particularly good. Uh, but as we say this longer, more and more, it looks like it's just going to be more of a standard opener. So Lings are going to delay the natural for a while. It's six Lings right now. Roaches or Reaper on the other side. Trying to get on top of the Marine. Ooh, very nice here. Dives up on top of the uh, on top of these STVs, but not a single unit's going to go down from Gumio. So he handles this very nicely. Natural's delayed a little bit, but the STV pull is fantastic. Marine doesn't go down. Uh, STV doesn't go down here. Well handled by Goom. Well handled by Gumiho. So now that uh, Dark is behind in this game just a little bit, again, delayed the natural by about like 10 seconds. Not really all that worth doing. Uh, so he's actually going to lift the barracks as well just to make sure that this that the Overlord goes down, which is awesome. Uh, if this was in my bracket, you'd say, oh, he's going mech off this. Because for whatever reason, the, the, the tell of I'm going mech is, oh, I'm lifting the barracks. I don't want to build a Marine. Um, but no, this is just something that Gumiho and other players will do where this is still bio more, more likely than not. Uh, we're not seeing a very, we're not seeing a super quick double gas on the natural. So, although I guess 430 is that timing. Anyway, we're not seeing early gas. This is just 111 Banshee on the way. No cloak, actually, not just yet. Um, regardless, this is still likely bio. Uh, even if Gumiho is the master of mech, still likely bio. Uh, but he does delay any scouting, deny any scouting from Dark. Dark is, uh, again, third base, a little bit slower than you would uh, than you would otherwise like to see. Uh, the funny thing is, when you talk about this, I feel like every player that's been behind it from the four to six minute mark or so is the player that's winning the games in this series. So Dark's going to 3-1. And when I say behind, by the way, to be clear, I'm not talking about insurmountable, insurmountable death. He's just marginally behind. Like, it's, he didn't get as much as he would have liked. 
not that big of a deal. This game is still very playable for Dark, certainly. So single, okay, double Evo on the way for, for Gumio. He's got his third base is done. Not on location just yet, but he's building the orbital off of that one. Wait, uh, yeah, there we go. Orbital off of that one. So there is that one. There, there's that. Three base, Banshee. Oh, is actually very late in the, uh, I, yeah. I guess it's not all that late. It's timing out with the second Banshee rather well. The weird thing about this is, I mean, these Banshees are being hidden. Generally, you would go and you would kind of do whatever you want to do and the first Banshee moves out and does something and no, but these Banshees were kept in the main base for quite a while as this Hellion will fall down. Certainly it will. But these Banshees, are they going to cloak up before they... Sh no, okay. So they're not going to hide the fact that they exist. They're just going to hide that they have cloak. Uh, which, I mean, there, there are spores in every mineral line. The Queens are going to dog this around. I, I don't really... I guess there's no spore in the natural, so there is that. And Banshees, they can just target it down. But no, okay. So the lair is done. It just, it's all about maximizing damage as much as possible. Overseer's on the way. Spore in the natural is going to be complete. But hey, four workers have died. So you'll take that. It's going to be fairly nice here for Gumio as he moves on into the mid game. And hey, maybe these Banshees cancel the fourth base. I mean, the Queens are here. There's detection. Uh, they're not going to be able to make that happen. But the Banshee stays alive. All right, then. Longer you keep these Banshee, the longer you keep the Banshee alive, the more potential damage that you can find is... Bailing speed is on the way. More drones on the way. Double Evo on the way. So Gumi was going to have that upgrade lead once again. As he puts himself up to five, five barracks or so. And Hydrilling Bane. That's going to be the name of the game from Gumio in this series, which you can tell by the fact that Gumio is on five gas. Generally, you don't go up to six gas. So Mutiling Bane, six gas. Roach Ravager, six gas. Hydrilling Bane, you only need five. Maximize that economy as much as possible is dark now. Well, he's slowly putting himself in a position where he wants to be. Again, the upgrades being delayed is not... I'm not even going to say they're delayed, but upgrades being slower than the Terran's not the best thing ever. Uh, certainly forgetting plus one attack is a problem. He has the money for it. I, I guess when he just went to get armor, he didn't... Or when he got to, went to get Carapace, he didn't have the upgrade. Or didn't have the gas for it. Or didn't have the minerals. I don't know. So... The Banelings are going to be less effective. The Zerglings are going to be less effective. Uh, that is a little bit unfortunate if you're a Dark fan. Now, Gumio is going to be very happy. He's got this 1-1 timing. Uh, he is attacking at a Baneling speed, so it's not the juiciest timing whatsoever. And there's plus one melee on the way. Uh, but he's going to be able to attack into this ba in the, into this timing with 1-1 against 0-0 for his opponent. As long as he kites back appropriately and defends appropriate and uh target fires appropriately his, his army is going to be pretty solid pretty good and hey Arax worked once we're gonna have to see if it's gonna work again it's gonna be five bases for dark but that fifth base is just a little bit slower and now for now lings are gonna try to get on top of this army but just forced away hydra range done grooves or uh, muscular augments on the ways the banshees on the north side are gonna try to take this base down Hydroling Bane can be a pretty solid answer to the Arax, but again, it's all about your mechanics. Can you properly go and make sure that you have enough that you're spending your bank? Dark, 900 minerals in the bank right now, 500 gas in the bank. As the attack, it's not truly getting started. One tank fall is actually a really nice move out of Dark, but once the Arax, once the 12 Marines start being produced in earnest, can you make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do as another tank should go now. No, nope. is going to be able to save that one. Dark has to back out for the time being, running around the corner. Target fire on the Banes, knocks one. But you got to make sure that you are just perpetually on top of your 1,000 minerals in the bank for Dark. 500, 600 gas in the bank for Dark right now. He needs to spend this money. And again, the other thing that we learned in that last game that you need to make sure you're on top of, always have Banelings in production. Always have Banelings in your army. If ever that does not happen, the Terran can steamroll on top of you. So the Banshee's on the north side. There's no detection. They're continuing to put pressure on this fifth base. One plus one armor is done. Plus one attack is not done yet. Gumiho has this incredible, pow incredibly powerful timing. And Darth got himself set up for the surround. Now one Banshee will fall down. Lings are a little bit of an awkward situation. But what really what Gumiho is looking for? That 2-2 two -two timing. Give him about 20 seconds. He's going to have a three up or he's going to have a two upgrade lead as the plus one plus one is done. He's going to have a three upgrade lead. Banshee, man, the, just the lack of detection. 
this banshee is being so annoying right now eventually it's gonna run out of, run out of vision or run out of there we go so it's dead but what it's done is force dark totally out of position this this oh man this siege up is getting a little bit stronger but now dark's ready to go for the break i think how long is he gonna wait to take a fight is it the max out dark is that what you want are you gonna go for a run by i mean you're gonna lose your fifth base you're gonna lose your fourth base dark all of a sudden i mean it seems like he just doesn't know how to deal with this this arax seems like gumi has found a good option uh, dark just lost two hatcheries in the blink of an eye and i mean you can lose one but losing two is just not the option i think he had i thought he had a good surround setup but apparently not he didn't want to take the fight and now this is a zerg player that's down upgrades this is a zerg player that's down production down hatcheries he's got a bunch of aliens looking to run into this this base and yeah sure But I can't help but feel that in part Dark overcommitted with his Baneling run by. Like, he's got a bunch of Banelings left over. And those are Banelings that are not in the fight. So, yeah, 12 workers died. And quite frankly, who cares? Well, the big deal about this as well is for the first time, this feels like a game where the player that was behind. I think this is the first game where the player that was behind in the early game is actually going to lose. Uh, for now, though, Dark is pretty heavily supply block. Going for a surround is maxed out as he possibly can. But the fight's disjointed. The Banelings on the backside are just not making contact. Banelings on the front side also not making contact here. The concave from Dark from Gumio is fantastic. Loses the Viper on the north side as well. Gumio ties us up. We're going to game five. And finally, we're seeing something different. No 16 hatch opener. No shenanigans like that. Nope. We have an actual build. Dark going 16, 18, 17. Like, this is the build that Zergs go for, but apparently not. Not for Dark. Uh, but this is the game that we got for Dark. This is Dark actually playing much more standard, which I like. I, it, he got stuff done the first game. He kind of got stuff done the second game. But from then on out, it's just not really working for him. Not really. And Gumiho is responding. So uh, maybe this is some good series planning. You do the same thing a couple times in a row. You say, hey, Gumiho, <laughs> you got to be very careful. And then they don't. So Dark now going for a much more standard opening. It begs the question, like, what his idea is in this game? Huh. It's funny. I've, I've cast however many games of Oceanborn, and I never really noticed the uh, the schools of fish on the bottom side. Although they, they are two, they are flat fish. <laughs> they look, I, I guess, no. no. Yeah, they look like 2D, but they're apparently not. So they're not, they're no, not grouper. Uh, thanks, Rootfly. Can we have a cheer for Bamel for taking time to show us these awesome games in chat, please? Thank you, Rootfly. Love you a long time. Uh, I'm also doing this because I genuinely love StarCraft. Even as, you know, I don't know. It's funny. We, we live in this RTS community where people are going to say, "How oh, you're doing this other thing. So clearly you don't like this thing. It's like, wow, I spent a month making Stormgate stuff because first of all, it was doing, <laughs> it was doing better viewership numbers than StarCraft was. Uh, but second of all, because I genuinely enjoy Stormgate. But that doesn't mean I don't love StarCraft. I dedicated like the last 10 years of my life to it. So uh, it was in some way, shape or form. So there is that. Is this Reaper? Oh, barely stays alive. So is this Overlord will fall down. Uh, Dark just doing something very standard. Gumiho doing something very standard in this third this game. Third base is up for Dark. Sure, well, it's on location. It's not up just yet. Uh, Hellion looks like we're going to see Banshees out of Gumiho in this game. No, we're not because there is no add on. Man, I didn't realize how far. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you know, I guess we are. It's going to be a tech lab built on the on the starport. It's actually going to be a little bit later Banshee than we might otherwise expect. But hey, the Banshees got a lot done. 
And yes, as uh, Kenny Tennyson points out, Gumio is playing the maximum number of maps possible. He has 2 1 every single series up into this point, uh, which is a. Eh? You want to try to get practice, get ready for. We're getting fused in the GSL round of eight or not, but you're getting ready for. Dreamhack Dallas that's going to happen in a couple months. Uh, hey, you know, play as many games as possible, right? And as, as StarCraft fans, I'm not going to complain. You're not. We're not going to complain. It's going to be great. Although I got to say, Gumi was being extremely. Uh, what's the word? He's being extremely disrespectful of my breakfast. I mean, it's about it's almost nine o'clock here uh, in the East Coast. You know, been, been up for a while, but I have some leftover French toast that I made from Sunday that is delicious. And I was ho and I'm starting to I'm starting to get hungry. I'd like to be able to eat my tasty French toast for breakfast. Thank you very much, Gumi Helm. If you could stop delaying this series one way or the other, if you could just win it or lose it. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. So. Ooh, we talked about mech in that last game about how lift in the barracks was a was a mech tell and you know i'm sorry i should have paid attention to the fact that there was pretty qu pretty quick gas taken on the natural but we have mech on the way factories two of them on the way battle mech mass cyclone heli and into something else on the way for gumio in this game number five although uh, i talked to scarlet before katavitz and she was telling me that you know Calling it battle mech isn't really fair because the different there, there's no difference between battle mech and no battle mech. It's just mech. That's the only way you open nowadays. You you know, open something in the sky, maybe sure, fine, banshees or sure, but it, you open up Hellion Cyclone. That's just how you do it. So for now, we're gonna see Hellion Cyclone on the way, banshees on the map, Raven getting added in for creep control, and is Dark ready for this? He's got one one roaches. He's got Ling speed to get this around. So, and she's in the main. Oh, man, six workers going down here as well. There's no detection in the main base, in any base whatsoever. Do we have? So we do have a layer. There is that. But eight drones are going to go down. Hellion's thinking about diving forward as well. So this is a. I mean, this Ling run by doesn't get. It's a scout actually. Seeing the cyclones and seeing the Raven on top of the Hellions and everything else is probably a really good scout for Dark. He should be able to identify. Him. I mean, this is just the fact that there's no bio. Should be a pretty decent tell. For now, though, creep denial is, is still happening. Hurricane thrusters on the way, which, by the way, uh, the fact that we're changing them to hurricane engines in the next patch, thank you. The cyclone has no thrusters. Now, it might make sense if you're saying, well, we attack faster. It's an, an attack speed buff because they fire rockets and rockets can have thrusters. Not perfect, but you know, Actually, even then, rockets have engines for the most part, not thrusters. So, you know. Even then, I, I don't know that uh, it would make total sense, but it would make more sense. You know, hurricane boosters. I don't know. Anyways, oh, we saw something. Uh, Bailey Nest? What's a, hundred, what's a tech building that's 100 to 100? Is that a... I actually can't remember. Anyways, we saw something canceled as the uh, Banshee's going to show forward once again. Creep Denial, damage on Queens, whatever they can find is fantastic. Uh, but Gumio hasn't really been able to go. Um, Really doesn't have that ability to, hasn't really moved out just yet. But what he's waiting on is, is the Hurricane Thrusters. He's waiting on the plus one attack. Is that that really big timing? So for now, moving up the ramp doesn't feel incredible. That's still a little bit scary. I mean, it's a bunch of one-run roaches. They have speed. Is uh, now finally, I think we're gonna hit the timing. Cyclones. They have hurricane thrusters. They got plus one attack done in five seconds. Of course, now they benefit from attack upgrades in a way that they previously didn't. Uh, when I say previously, I mean in the previous version of the cyclone, they were spell damage. They did not benefit from attack upgrades. Now they do, and that does help out quite a lot. And actually, uh, this has been rolled back already. But on the first version of the 5.0.13 patch the one that's on the ptr right now uh they actually were going to benefit doubly from upgrades so every upgrade was going to give them plus two attack instead of plus one but i believe i guess in testing that was too strong so uh that has been rolled back cyclones now only get one uh one upgrade for attack so that does help up and for now dark he's got he's got a nidus on the way 
You got an overlord position on the north side to try to see uh, maybe you can drop an Idus in the main base because this army is powerful from Gumio. It can't get caught out. It's pretty, pretty paper. But more importantly, it's one of those things that multi prying is not particularly easy. So the entire army is going to be at front, which means that when this Nidus is going to get dropped eventually, um, for now, it's just not as, uh, Vikings are on the way. So actually the overlord was shown a little bit too early. The Vikings are going to be able to knock this down. Um, I was going to say, eventually it's going to be hard for Gumiho to get back in time and, and properly defend things, but Nidus isn't going to pop. It's just going to be a Hydra Lurker, Roach Hydra Lurker moving on forward. Now with the tanks here as well, this is not a fight that Dark wants to take. So Gumiho is getting closer and closer to maxing out. Vikings dealing with the Overlord, uh, but we will see this Nidus drop down. Vikings, I think, should just land on top. Banshees are here as well. Uh, so this should be, yeah, this is going to be dealt with. So no Nidus. Overlord's dead. The first hit is gone. And I really do like this addition of the Viper or of the of the Vikings, excuse me, even just for the main army, because what this means is we're going to see an abduct here on the tank. Uh, what this is, oh, that's a nice anti-armor missile, but it's still, you don't want to fight into this. The Viper abducts are really strong into this army. Um, but generally, I was going to say that the point is you had a couple Vikings and they just sit above the army and Vipers die. Ah, OK, Blue, Blue Cyclone points out it could have been an accidental uh, second Hydrodin. I'd buy that. That'll make sense. Oh, look at this here. Even as I'm a little annoyed because I want my breakfast, Gumio. I want my nice French toast. Uh, we got Yamato and Gumio is playing a mech game, which of course is going to take a while to resolve. But uh, we got Yamato Cannon on the way. We got three more command centers, of course, as Gumio is just developing his economy. But more importantly, there's going to be a battle cruiser transition in this game. Huh. Well, for now, though, we got attack happening on the left side. Now, abduct here on the tank. Nidus as well for reinforcing. And talking about Yamatos and everything else. I mean, sure, you can go for that. But uh, this army from Gumio is not prepared to defend this. He's got an attack on the bottom side that's going to kill a uh, base. That's, that's fantastic. I guess the planetary will survive. After all, queens are going to go down. The base is going to die at the end of the day. And actually, this is a pretty solid trade for Gumio. I thought it wasn't going to be incredible. I thought it was a setup. It's like, yeah, Gumio, you're going to get a hatch, but you're going to lose a lot more. Well, apparently not. Because all those Vikings, all, all the Vipers went down. That's what I was talking about. You get the Vikings like this. You get armor on them just to make them last just a little bit longer. And the Vipers, they only have so much. Right? like they only have so much HP. You go and you have the Vikings, they're just sitting on top. The Hydras are, if they're attacking them, they're not attacking the ground. So that's some HP soak and you're able to do whatever it is that you want to do. So for now, Gumio's sitting here. He is rich, he's happy, he's wealthy, he's fat. <laughs> he's uh, well-fed in this game. We've got our battle cruiser transition, which, you know, yes, there is a Spire on the way. There's a Spire done. It's a greater Spire on the way. Uh, Brood Lords against battle cruisers are not incredible. Hydras against battle cruisers are pretty horrible, actually. Uh, ideally, battle cruisers have plus two armor, but they have so much armor that uh, the Hydras don't do a lot. Not really. So the question now is at what point does Gumiho show the battle cruisers? Does he mac does he sacrifice more of these Hellions and build like three more battle cruisers? Is that the play? I don't know, but for now, this Nidus is going to go down to a bunch of blue flame. Well, okay, he's just not going to bother with it. Instead, diving into the mineral line where there are just not a lot of drones, actually. Dark's economy is not incredible, but oh, I, he can get some lineup on these Hydras. I, that still trades somewhat okay. Nah, okay, well, man, you got a, you got eight drones. You got like a Hydra or two. Not, not the best, but this is freeing up supply for three more battle cruisers. More and more and more battle cruisers on the way. Dark's trying to take every base that he can have on the map. And Dark has actually noticed he's not building broods. He's got the corruptors on the map just yet. He really wants to deal with these Vikings, I guess. So we're going to see. Yeah, uh, goodbye. That over that overseer is going to fall down. So any sort of... I'm not sure what detection you're totally worried about. But any sort of undetectable thing is is there is I don't really know. And Farm, Farm Man Official, I love you too. Hello. 
also we talk about this i'm just talking about how dark's not really morphing broods at the moment well he is now and broodlords uh, versus battle cruisers it only goes one way <laughs> so this base will fall certainly is you know, was taking some damage and dark has been trading worse despite everything so This is a ton of battle cruisers. Six battle cruisers on the other side of the map. And notice they're not teleporting across. They want to be able to teleport right back home. So that does make a big deal. So they're just this slow convoy of cattle on the bottom side of the map is now Viper or Vikings are going to run forward. And it, I mean, Brood Lords into Vikings. Yeah, there are Hydras and Vipers. And that does help as we're going to see some, not all, but some of these orbitals go down. I don't like this army that that Dark has. Uh, not really the. Now the battle cruisers need to find a position where they can get some damage done. As another orbital will fall down. Vikings, they're a little zoned out at the moment, certainly. But we're seeing the bat. We're seeing these brood lords get targeted down really, really nicely here. The attack on the right side didn't get much of anything done. Battle cruisers. I mean, again, we talked about this. <laughs> Hydras are horrendous against battle cruisers. So all of the broods are going to go down. I, I what, you parasiting bomb a battle cruiser? They have. 500 HP. This is a fat. This is a massive tech swap for Camille right now. Dark it doesn't really have an option whatsoever. Yeah, like wanted to make sure I got the. Yeah, the 550 HP. Guess one battle cruiser. Oh, you can teleport back on that Gumio. Just when they get abducted, just teleport right back home. There we go. Three more battle cruisers on the way. Ten more cyclones on the way. Plus two attack. Or yeah, plus two attack for air. We'd love to see additional ground ar or additional armor as well going up to plus three. But Dark, he got a couple orbitals. That really was just about it. Corruptors, of course, they do much better against battle cruisers than well anything else. But there should be a mass repair right now. One battle cruiser goes down. And again, these are these are decently. Come on, repair these battle cruisers. Cyclones are not quite in position, but. That's the point of the that's point of the cyclones. Corruptors die, uh, not as quickly as they used to because it's bonus damage versus mechanical, not armored anymore, and they're not spell damage. So th there is that. But the battle cruisers are still here. Ogumiho is still incredibly rich. He's still maxed out on supply. This attack on the right side, I I don't really think it, I, it's only two tanks. Maybe it does get something done. Scan gets gets dropped here, but the lurkers will. In fact, stay alive. The tank just has to run, but it's dead. Even still, I, this army, I don't know that this is an army that, that Dark can fight whatsoever. <laughs> He's lost the two bases on the bottom side. The Lurkers, were they brought back home? Yeah, they're brought back home. They have to defend against this right now. Parabomb on everything. Battle Cruisers are just teleporting back home to run away, I guess. And I guess Dark holds on to this, maybe? Does he even? No, he doesn't. Dark is dead in this game. Gumiho with the reverse sweep. Loses the first two, but different styles. Eight racks is mech. Makes it happen. He wins the EPT 220 Korea. Cool, pretty cool series from Gumiho. That was fun.